Hey everyone, I, I'm just going to make this real quick. I'm in uh, during lunch of the uh, 2021 AUA coding seminar here in Vegas at the West End. It's the first in-person meeting from the AUA in, in, since the pandemic started. But I want to give you some highlights of what I learned or what I found, what I discovered uh, regarding the uh, coding and billing. So Dr. Rubenstein uh, did a unfortunately could not be here so he recorded a uh, presentation and uh, I want to just share with you some of my findings or takeaways. Uh, please note that 99203 at level three, uh, level 3 new patient pays less than a 99214 so this is something that I share with the present the, the attendees here so keep in mind that if you have a BPH patient who is not doing as well as you like so chronic problem not a treatment goal for which you change medication, continue medication, add a medication, or decided to have surgery, or decided to do further workup, that is now a 99214, right? So you have a level four problem with a level four risk, which is prescription drug management, that's a 99214. That pays more than a new patient, level three new patient in 2021. So keep that in mind. Um, Let's see, G2211, we talked about that in the past. It is, uh, don't even bother billing for it because it's not even, don't for the coders and billers don't don't waste your time doing that let's see and I share something uh, Dr. Rubenstein presented about time-based billing in 2021 and what can be counted what can't be counted how you should count it well if for those of you who get like I do get a stack of notes from outside primary care doctor or maybe the ER or the hospital and you're evaluating you're looking through that and you're summarizing that before an e &M visit. That is a potentially billable encounter, a code. So 99358A is the code that you can consider using for Medicare. Private payers obviously are going to be different. They may not pay for that code. All right, so next thing. Now, I disagree with Dr. Jonathan Rubenstein on this issue for a long time, and that is who is an independent historian relative to Night, uh, night relative to 2021 E and M codes, and if you look at the AMA definition, it pretty much spells out that a parent of an infant or a kid who can't give you adequate history, that parent is considered an independent historian. And I asked Mark Painter, who's also here today, and he agrees with me that a parent of a baby or toddler who can't give you a history can be considered an independent historian. And that obviously would make it into the data element in the medical decision making when it comes to E&M. Let's see, we talked about, oh, we were, uh, minor versus major, you guys already know this. Minor and major is not based on the uh, global package. So 90 day global does not mean that is a major surgery, okay? It's, what are, the definition is, if you think, if a surgeon in your field think that it is a major or a minor surgery, that is what classifies major and minor, not the surgical global package. And uh, then uh, Dr. Peppel uh, discussed telemedicine, and uh, she said some of the advantages of telemedicine, as we all know, you don't have to take time off uh, work to visit uh, the office, you don't have to uh, uh, take the time to actually drive uh, to the office, and very importantly for a lot of the caretakers of the kids, there's no more child care issues if you have to uh, take time to physically go to an office. Sometimes you have child care issues, but telemedicine eliminates that problem. Uh, also, keeping in mind that parity, payment parity and coverage parity are not the same. So make sure you have coverage parity and payment parity whenever possible. Mark Payne discussed some of the Medicare updates. In 2022, the proposed convergent factor decrease is about 3.89%. So in 2022, if everything stays as proposed, that decrease is going to be about 3.89%. There's some changes to split visits. He just did a nice podcast about that on prsnetwork.com slash podcast. I think that is episode 59 or 60, the one that just dropped yesterday. So check that out. The uh, practice expense staff decrease from uh, 2022 is going to be about 1% for urology. So keep that in mind. Again, these are proposed rules for 2022. Uh, so stay tuned in November for the final rule. 
Uh, currently, remote workflow, uh, re, uh, sorry, remote Euroflow is uh, not covered uh, for Medicare, but there are some remote therapeutic monitoring RTM codes that are being proposed. 989X1 through 5 are some of the proposed codes. And these seem to only cover orthopedics and neurology, but not for urology just yet. I mentioned to, at the, to the attendees at the meeting to be on the lookout for the 22 proposed changes that we are going to take a potentially a large hit on the performance of the uh, resume uh, procedure and also the Eurolift procedure, 15.8% decrease and 18.1% decrease respectively if the proposed rules stay the way they are. And uh, lastly, the last thing that was covered was about the local coverage determination, national coverage uh, decision, the uh, local coverage articles and, and uh, local coverage uh, decisions. So NCDs, NCAs, LCDs, and LCAs, make sure you keep those in mind as you are billing for services from private payers and also from Medicare, of course. Um, one interesting, a couple of interesting things. Okay, so. Pay, payment for call. Uh, of course, I will not disclose who it is, but I just spoke with uh, one of the uh, attendees here. Uh, they just negotiated with the hospital system to take call for $2,000 per 24 hours, and that covers multiple hospitals. So keep that in mind as you are on your journey to negotiate uh, for call. And her comment to me was, it is still not worth it for the physicians to cancel clinic and to take care of one problem, maybe a complex Foley catheter placement or something like that. All right, and uh, secondly, uh, Mark Painter mentioned something uh, in the contract of one of the, one of the uh, practices. In, in one of the contracts, it says that if the payer does not, uh, does not under, pays you $5 or less relative to your fee schedule, then you cannot appeal the claim. You cannot say, you know what, you underpaid me. So guess what? This payer routinely underpays the, the doctor $5. So keep that in mind. Look at things in your contract and what they can and cannot get away with. And you may want to negotiate that out of the contract. All right, so I got to get back in there. Uh, we're starting again, and uh, I'll keep you guys updated on what's new and uh, what's uh, exciting. All right, take care. Bye-bye.